All right. First of all, thank you for the committee, and congratulations to the other inductees. A long time ago in 1961, a clueless high school boy made a decision. He wanted to be a high school swim coach. Taught to love the sports of swimming by his first coach, Dick Skyser, and inspired by the leadership of his high school coach, Jerry Farmer, he sat on his path. This path led him to Indiana University where Doc Councilman reigned as the leading coach of swimming in the world. As team manager there each day was like attending a seminar in the coaching of swimming. Upon graduation, with the help of Jack Pettinger, he helped him get his first job at Fenwick High School in Oak Park. It was there he started to develop his craft of make, molding boys into men and making them better athletes. One day after about six years, he was discussing another coach who had been there 30 years with Dan O'Brien, who was his predecessor at Fenwick. He's had a lot of experience, he said. No, said Dan. He's had the same experience 30 times. It was that statement that let him make his next big decision. He would challenge himself against the best. He would go into college coaching. With stints at Cincinnati, Tulane, Iowa State University, he was guided along the way by uh, Jack Pettinger, who was, who was the assistant coach at Indiana and, and now the head coach at Wisconsin. For 10 summers, he coached with Jack and Dan Ross, the current Purdue coach, learning from each other and combining their teams to create a powerhouse in USA summer swimming. During the summer of 1987, he sat down with Kathy Wickstrand Gain to help her prepare to interview for the newly created head women's coaching job at Northwestern University. A year later, she called him back and asked him to apply for the men's job. After all, the NU team had been last in the Big Ten for the previous 11 years and had only won finalist in the last six years, and their relays had finished last for the previous 10 years. What's not to like? <laughs> <laughs> However, the women's team, along with many of the other women's sports, was pretty good, so he gave it a shot. That clueless boy obviously was me, and now I'm in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> When I started coaching at uh, NU, Northwestern was a way station. As you, you went to NU to go somewhere else. But I was seen through the efforts of the athletic administration, and in particular the current athletic director, Jim Phillips. Northwestern go from being a way station to a destination for coaches. I'm happy to have been part of that process and no doubt that Coach Barnett's expect victory signaled a change in attitude for all of Wildcat athletics. But have no doubt, through the administration's efforts and their, and their support from the, from the presidents, Northwestern has now become a place where coaches and athletes have the tools and there's a culture where you can expect to be successful. My supporters. My parents, my mother supported me whatever I wanted to do. And dad just said, make the best of my opportunities. My siblings, my oldest brother, John, gave me my first book about the coaching and swimming. My younger brother, Rolf, who's out here, was the one who got me into the sport. He was a talented swimmer who went on to become an All-American at Michigan State. My younger sister, Sana, became a big supporter in my later years. My biggest supporter, however, was my sister Mary Ann, who's sitting out here. When I first started coaching high school at Fenwick, she would bring her three children, including my niece Tracy, who's sitting out here, to the meets. Their cheers of punch him in the tummy, punch him in the tummy, <laughs> terrorized the Chicago Catholic Leagues. <laughs> Their real reason for attending, of course, was to see Uncle Bob get thrown in the pool after championship meets. My brother Rolf, who's recently retired from Montana State University, has become my biggest fan. He's out here. Since, since his retirement, he has attended meets I have coached, including the U.S. Olympic trials, 
went to the Rio Olympics and as the last two Division II NCAA championship meets where I'm currently coaching at Queen's University of Charlotte. His wife, Janie, who's here, claims he has become a groupie. <laughs> I would like to thank the assistant coaches who have worked with me and the swimmers at Northwestern. In particular, Jimmy Tierney, who's out here, who Kathy Wickstrand and I shared as our assistant before he replaced Kathy later on as the head women's coach. Jimmy and I continue to confer with each other and are best friends. Jimmy and the rest of the assistant coaches bought into the fact that you could be successful at Northwestern and helped us prove it. And now I'd like to uh, ask the swimmers that swam for me at Northwestern to stand, please. To you guys, the Northwestern swimmers, my undying thanks and admiration. At the beginning, we had to reach up to touch bottom. By the end, we had made our mark in the Big Ten and the NCAs as a team to be reckoned with. Each and every one of you was instrumental in making this happen. I appreciate every yard you swam, every sacrifice you made. And I stand humbly before you now, representing your efforts and your accomplishments. I'm reminded of Coach John Wooden's speech and the difference between winning and success. I am here at Northwestern because Northwestern swimmers win, won a lot of Big Ten and NCAA championship races. That perhaps makes me a winner. But one of the reasons I loved college coaching is that it's a place where young men and women discover who they are and define who they're going to be. I loved being part of that process. And as I look to my supporters out here and see doctors, lawyers, scientists, military leaders and successful businessmen, good husbands and fathers, that makes me smile. That, my friends, is success. Thank you. Go Cats.